All right, guys, this is gonna be a video on acorn identification. So by the acorn alone, this is not required for every species of oak we learn, and some of the oaks are grouped together, which I will go into later. And this is going to be every oak that we learn this semester. So you're not responsible for all of them at once. I'm just keeping the video together for simplicity. So we're going to separate the acorns up by subgenera, so whether they are white oak, red oaks, or are one exotic oak, because these all have different characteristics. So let's start with our exotic oak, which is Quercus acutissima. So this is the sawtooth oak. So the acorns here are kind of large, they're probably about an inch long. They're rounded to oblong and really what their giveaway is is this cap so this has really really long scales that are going to exceed go past the cap margin so each one of these is a scale they come to a point like a fringe and they stick out in random directions and again they're very long and the top ones will often curl up you can see if you look on this side. This is a really distinct acorn. It's large. On fresh acorns, the cap will cover most of the acorn, probably about two-thirds to a half. And again, that large sort of egg-shaped acorn. And it's that really, really distinct cap with those long scales that you're looking for. All right, so the main difference in the acorns that you're going to use to differentiate between whether it is a in the red oak group or the white oak group is the cap. So if you look at the cap, it's got this rubra, obviously in the red oak group because it is Quercus rubra. You can see, if it will zoom in, there you go, these nice overlapping scales. So they are really thin and they overlap. So just like scales on a fish. Whereas on, you got a Quercus alba here in the white oak group. You can see the individual units on the cap protrude. So they're kind of warty. There you go. So it's really that there's gonna be a lot more texture on white oak acorns. They're gonna be a lot more three-dimensional. You can see that also in Quercus montana. Just a lot more going on here. They're really protruding out. All right, so let's start out with Quercus rubra for our red oaks. You can see this guy is kind of a medium acorn. Here's my finger for comparison. He's an elongated egg shape. And this one, what you're gonna remember it by is the fat man in the beret, because you can see it's got a really shallow cap. And the widest part of the acorn extends past that cap. So it really looks like an egg wearing a little hat. For the scales themselves, they're going to be really small and not very noteworthy with like rounded edges. Quercus coccinea is another common red oak that we're going to see in this area. And you're going to remember this one by the turban. So the acorns here are smaller than rubra. They are a little bit more rounded and they have a very large acorn cap. And this cap is going to cover about half or more of the nut itself. And it's going to be much wider than the nut, so it looks like it's wearing a turban. And if we look at those scales, they are a little bit larger and a little bit more distinguished than rubra. So they have a little bit more texture. You can see that on this one especially. It shows the, some of the variation where these scales are a lot wider and a little bit bumpier. But definitely still scales, not warts. So the lowland equivalent of coccinea, the Quercus schumardii, schumard oak. So you can see he's about the same size. He's a medium acorn. His cap's not going to be quite as deep, so it's not going to cover as much of the acorn, probably a half or less. More typically around a third of the acorn will be covered. 
but it's still kind of a wide cap. It's gonna go out a little bit past the acorn's widest point. If we zoom in on those scales. See they're also overlapping. And not very distinct. But still again that wide cap and a medium acorn. But not quite as wide as coccinia. Quercus volutna is another red oak. This is black oak, but it's still in the red oak group. What you're looking for is small to medium acorns. They are pretty rounded. And that this cap has a fringe to it. So you've got these long imbrigate scales, so overlapping scales, that look like shingles. They're a little bit pointed, and they're gonna overhang the cap. So it's fringed. This one is unusual for black oak, where the cap covers most of the acorn, but it is really good for showing you the fringe. This one is more typical. Oop. This one is more typical, but you can still see on the edge of the cap that there is a little bit hanging over, a, little, a few scales hanging over. If you take out this cap, you can see the shape a small to medium rounded acorn. All right, we've got two red oaks here that you're commonly going to see as street trees. First is Quercus, Quercus texana. And this is pretty distinctive of the red oak group that we're learning because it is very elliptical, so very slender and elongated. You can see this one's even skinnier and more tapered. The cup the acorn cap is going to cover very little the acorn. It's probably about a quarter of the acorn. And here is the cap in detail. See how it comes to an abrupt edge. It doesn't really fold over in that lump like you see on the edge of Pagoda where it bumps out to fold over. These guys are going to be kind of medium acorn and really what you're looking for is that acorn shape being kind of oblong. Rhubarb will also be kind of oblong, but it won't be quite as skinny or as small. You can see rhubarb is a lot chunkier. Palustris, the pin oak, is also a common street tree. This guy is a medium acorn with a very, very round nut. Looks like a marble. He's also able to have those nice striations. Those are common throughout most of the red oak group, so don't be thrown off if you see them. And he's got a very, very shallow cap. So that cap is like barely on the acorn. And it's got very, very tiny scales. If we zoom in, they're hard to distinguish from each other. All right, for our small red oak acorns, we have these guys grouped into categories where if we show you this acorn, you can answer with any of the, the, um, the names listed below. So we'll start with this guy. Quercus pagoda and Quercus falcata have very similar acorns that we're not expecting you to distinguish. They're very small acorns. They have a cap that covers a quarter to a third of the acorn and it bumps out a little bit, but not as much as coccinia. And if you were to take off the cap of these guys, they'd be a very round acorn, a very round acorn. Whereas Coxinia and Shimardii, in addition to being much larger, they're going to be more oblong. And then Rubra is going to be a whole egg shape. So these guys are nice and small. And that cap really comes to an abrupt edge when it like folds over. It does not taper off. That's Pagoda or Falcata. If your acorn is teeny, then it could be Nigra, Phalos, Laurifolia, or Hemispherica. These acorns are almost perfectly circular. They're very round. They're very small. You can see here, they are tiny. The caps on these guys is very, very shallow. So it's going to cover barely any of the acorn. So if we put these guys together. You can see it covers almost none of the acorn. We take a look at a closer look 
put that cap. It will focus. There we go. You can see all those little scales. So again, a nice red oak, but one of our smallest red oaks. The cap is really nothing particular. So really what you're looking for there is very, very tiny rounded acorns. They will also sometimes have these vertical striations. So you can see the vertical stripes on these guys. If I tone down the brightness, it's vertical striped. So don't be thrown off if that character is present. But these guys are going to be a lot smaller and a lot more rounded than the acorns for Pagoda and Falkia. And also that acorn cap is going to be more shallow. So it doesn't bump over on the edge, whereas this guy rounds over to a point here. This guy just stops. It's very shallow. All right, moving on to the white oak group. As I said, these guys are going to have caps that have more of a warty three-dimensional scales on them. We're going to start off with Quercus alba. This is, of course, the white oak. It's their champion, our main guy for the white oak subgenera. He's going to have an oblong skinny shape, kind of like a bullet. He's a medium to large acorn, so he's going to be taller than what you saw of the red oak Texana, but still a very similar shape. And he's going to have a very warty cap, so it just looks like little bumps. And this cap will only cover probably about a quarter of it. So this is not his cap, but you can see that it does not cover much of the acorn. It's a very shallow cap relevant, really, relative to the rest of the nut. Let's take a look at our odd man out in the white oak group for what we learned. It's Quercus virginiana. This one's also got a slender, elongate shape, very elliptical. So it's not egg-shaped where it's fat on one end. It's very much just elliptical. It's widest in the middle. It's going to be smaller than white oak because it's a pretty small acorn. And its cap is very distinctive because it's going to be born on a long peduncle. So there's a stalk on the cap that will stay on with the cap when it falls off. It will dehiss with that. And that cap is going to be very small and shallow, covering probably only the, the top third of the acorn. And it's just a very, very tiny cap. But it looks like a little tiny cup because it's very rounded. Quercus montana and Quercus pachovia are very similar because they actually used to be the same species, Quercus prinus. These guys, they're going to be really, really enormous acorns. So they're going to be a lot larger than Quercus alba. This is a very big, hefty acorn. They're both large, and they are very egg-shaped. So let's look at Montana. So he's gonna have that typical warty cap that I think of when I see Alba. But if you look here, you can see the scales are gonna, or the warts are gonna get smaller towards the edge, and that cap is actually thinning out towards the edge. So you can see it becomes a lot more closely oppressed, where if, if you were following the same shape of the higher scales and the higher part of the cap, you would expect it to bunch out more in relation to the widening acorn, but it really stays tight. Those really small scales, it's very thin at the edge. Nice and thin. The showy eye, on the other hand, got this very, very distinctive cap. So these scales, these warty scales, are still very three-dimensional, so you're definitely going to know it's still a white oak if you look at it on the side and profile but it's got a more pointed edge to it, almost like a red oak. So it looks like a little fat triangle. It's gonna be a really, really large cap that's gonna cover only about the top quarter. But really look at that texture versus the texture of Montana. And you can still see, if you look at it next to, let's do Coccinia for comparison, it's definitely still a white oak. There's a lot more going on. Those are definitely wartier, more so than scales. Our two white oaks that take cap scales to the extreme are going to be bicolor. So Quercus bicolor here and Quercus lirata. 
So looking at Quercus bicolor, it's also going to be born on a long peduncle like Virginiana. So that's going to come off with the acorn when it falls. It's going to be a medium acorn compare it to Alba. It's a little bit shorter. It's going to be a little bit fatter and a little bit oblong like an egg. And that cap is going to have warty scales on it, but they're going to have a little bit of a fringe. So they're going to be a little bit longer than the scales even on Mishoei. So you can see they hang off on the edge because of that. So just a little bit longer overall. They hang as a fringe. Lirata is also going to have those warty scales that are a little bit elongated and are going to hang off as a fringe at various points, but you're not going to mistake this as anything else. It's going to be round, so you can see sometimes they're very flattened. Again, the stalk is often going to come off with these, but what you're looking at here, this is common name overcup oak, because that acorn cap is going to cover probably about 90%, if not 100% of the nut. So yeah, it's got a long scales, but it's covering most of this. This might be similar if you look at it for the first time to Quercus acutissima. At acutissima, again, those scales are gonna be so much longer, they're gonna stick out so much further. And also it's only gonna cover about two thirds of the acorn. And this fringe might hang over onto the acorn more than you think it would, but it's not going to wrap around the acorn like these guys do. So these guys, like the cap is glued on all the way around.